by which mother nature does that you're going to do incorrect management of your fields so you know taking folks from hey guys this is what you've been taught but this is incorrect so the thing that i that that is that i've noticed is that the formulas and the reactions that are online are disembodied from the actual context on the ground and, and, and rooted examples. And for me, and I was looking at, at your example and, and I had to just play with it. And it was like my way of writing it down, color coding it and everything. And I had to be like, all right, now what would that actually be? What's the chemical equation that goes along with this? Yeah. And in those chemical equations, they neglect to tell you that the only way this can happen ever is by having enzymes do the catalysis of that that interaction it is not something that can occur well okay maybe if we wanted to have a nuclear explosion go off okay but most of us would not like that so if you want to have these things happening in your soil you have to have life you've got to have the right sets of organisms there to do it it doesn't just happen by itself and that's what you lose when you just have the chemical equations. Oh, great, we've got it all balanced. How many hydrogens and oxygens and nitrogens on this side of the equation is compared to that? That's what I learned in school, and that means meaningless. Yeah, it's because you can't do that. If all you do is get your nitrogen, your oxygen, your hydrogens, and mix them all together, nothing's going to happen. You're not going to be able to make nitrogen in a form that your plant can utilize. You have to have the biology in there to do that job. I think some of the some of the the names too, the fact that it's um, some uh, like nitrifying, nitrifying bacteria, nitrification, those make sense to me because they're compartmentalized. But when it's uh, like a modification, that's a bundle of a huge amount of activity. Um, yeah. And, like and you that. have to have the right conditions for the organisms to actually do that. Yeah. And then yeah. there's this attitude that this is happening in a nicely uniform, you've got the same number of bacteria at every teeny tiny point in the soil and it's all nice uniform, everything is doing, no, no, it does not work that way. Here's your root, here's where nitrogen fixation is occurring and it's in this little place and then maybe another and another and another but out here totally different things are happening you're not fixing nitrogen over here and the error that soil scientists have made that nitrogen fixation occurs in root systems and it releases nitrate no it doesn't it does not do that at all the plant's going to get proteins or amino acids from that nodule None of that is escaping out into the soil. Things that are going on inside that nodule, none of that fixed nitrogen immediately goes out into the soil. Uh 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 uh. Yeah, and the so plant they've has got to it break so down. completely wrong. The plant has to break down. Uh, Carol yep. Depp talked about this. She measured the uh, the soil, and she she measured it during growth. She measured it during fruiting, and then she. Um, let it break down and when it was incorporated and broken down that's when the nitrogen went up and she said the nitrogen was concentrated and focused in the seeds and pot yep so we literally could lay down seed and then um then till it under right after it sprouts like right when it's when it's most vibrant when you've got a seed that's high the wide seed in ratio that's in a seed seed seeds the germ of a seed has a carbon and nitrogen ratio somewhere around eight to one up to 10 to one. So it's all the stored yummy stuff for that plan to put out cotyledons and to put out root systems and get all of that started. But uh, the seed coat has a seed and ratio typically up around a hundred. So if you take a seed with intact seed coat and the germ, uh, seed and ratio is about 30. <laughs> 